a Raspberry Pi. So, you may have seen videos of my Doctor Who canine replica. It's a fully animatronic robot with multiple computers and sensors. A key component of this is the venerable Raspberry Pi, which I use to display graphics and even operate an onboard camera, which is used to take pictures and print out fun photo receipts. In 2021, the Raspberry Pi Pico was announced, which is easy to use and draws much less power and fills a gap between Arduinos and full-size Raspberry Pis. You get most of the same interfaces with the real world without needing to use a Linux-based operating system. Velocrow is offering a starter kit that includes a Pi Pico with a whopping assortment of 32 sensors and modules. Shoot, a fella could have a pretty good weekend in Vegas with all that stuff. Almost all the parts come in individually wrapped packages. I really didn't get the scope of all the parts until I pulled them all out. Hopefully, it all fits back in the box. Of course, the kit includes a Pi Pico with header pins already soldered on. You can also see a function button and USB port with labeled pins on the bottom. The kit has several small breadboards which the Pico easily snaps into. Before starting, you will need to download the manual in PDF form, which has a list of experiments, pinout diagrams, and programming software installation instruction. All programming is done through the included USB cable. After installing the Thawney programming software, wait, who names these things anyways? You will need to configure the interpreter for communication. But it won't work until you select the correct COM port on the bottom right of the screen. Then you will see a shell prompt where you can now load one of the sample lessons. There are 32 in all, with some very simple ones to start. Just load a Python script, and click the play icon. A test script blinks an onboard light. It works! Yes! <clears throat> Note that when you unplug the Pico, the program is erased from memory. To change that, reconnect to the Pico, then instead of pressing the play button, save the file as main.py to the Pico's internal non-volatile memory. Now when powered up, it will automatically run the file called main, which can be deleted later if you want. There's a whole host of ribbon connectors and jumpers included. These will be used to wire up all the various parts later. While I was at it, I printed out the pin diagram for easy reference. Lessons in the manual are well laid out with brief descriptions and explanations and then wiring instructions, along with the code listing. If you've never used a breadboard, it also explains how they work. The first lesson pulses an LED on and off with varying intensity. Not bad, it has a nice effect. It's easy to edit the code to, for example, speed up the pulsing by lowering the sleep value. Next was something they called a flowing light, which used multiple LEDs. Another simple program. I guess I would call that a light chaser. I modified it to slow down. Then I wanted to increase the off time at the end. Oops, it's not supposed to do that. Oh, I forgot to increase the array size. Much better. One last tweak to reduce the light count.
Okay, so there's a microphone and RGB LED module, which makes a sound activated light. Test, 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 one, two, three, test. This is a test. If this had been an actual emergency, <laughs> I couldn't resist. Whoa, a laser module. But don't expect to hurt anything with it. That lesson makes an LED change color when the beam is broken to the light sensor. Magnet! There's a nifty magnetic switch lesson which plays a musical tone. I couldn't help to see if I could make the music more recognizable. Let me know if you can tell what it is. Lesson 15 uses a potentiometer module and one side of a dual motor controller. to control a motor and fan. You get variable speed with live reporting of potentiometer position values. Motor was spinning backwards, so I reversed the wires. Much better. Another lesson uses a micro servo, which is a relatively known brand. This was the first lesson I needed to copy over a separate library file in order to use the special servo functions in Python. The library file is included with the lesson files and stays on the Pico's flash memory storage once copied to it. Copying the file is very easy using Thani's built-in file browser to right-click and upload option. A PS2 style analog joystick controls the servo. A rotary encoder and LED display makes up a count up timer, but I couldn't quite understand what it was counting and it just stopped at all nines. An impressive multi-line LCD display that uses I2C data connection was supposed to display a characters like a billboard, but it had an odd error I just couldn't figure out. Yet another display, this time a little OLED screen that I could use to make a simple calculator with the included membrane keypad. Huh. I wonder what happens if I divide by zero. The last few lessons involve the car chassis, which has a frame, wheels, gearbox, and battery holder. Gearbox units are quite nice with two output shafts and a removable motor. I needed to solder the wires onto the motor first and peel away the protective coverings on the plastic chassis. There looks to be some sort of encoder wheel for the gearboxes, but they were not used in any lessons. The gearboxes are first mounted to the chassis. Then the same motor controller we saw earlier. Swivel wheel. And battery box are installed. On off switch has a nice spot for it in the middle. And wheels just slide on. Breadboard has double sided tape for mounting to the chassis. I'll need to repurpose one of the jumpers to make up the battery ground connection. There we go. And I'll also wire up the motor controller. A test program is uploaded to check out the drive system.
It doesn't really do anything other than move forward and back and then spin in both directions. But hey, it works. I almost forgot and included a screwdriver. Which I used to install the two bumper switches. This particular lesson didn't work right at first. It just randomly spun around. Looking at the code, I found that the switch sensing was backwards in the program's if loop. So I simply reversed the order. That's more like it. While not perfect, it did work reasonably well. Next up was an ultrasonic distance sensor. with some telemetry. This setup worked really well from the start. <laughs> Despite some funny quirks. It would occasionally get into this continuous loop for a bit Which way did he go? Which way did he go? before breaking out of it. <laughs> Highly entertaining. Alright, I just had to try one more lesson. This time with an infrared control. You get this neat little remote controller with membrane keys. But you will have to supply your own coin battery. Oh, it works. Well, mostly. <laughs> but I could tell it was occasionally getting an intermittent signal. Yeah, quite glitchy when facing away. So I bent the receiver module back a bit. Which seemed to help the reception noticeably. Well, as much as I've shown you, that was only a sample of the projects included in the kit. As there are 32 different lessons, I really didn't show nearly everything, uh, including things that measure like uh, temperature and uh, s soil moisture, uh, even a motion detector. Uh, and of course there's, well, whatever this is. Anyways, it's going to take you a long time to get through them all. However, I'll have to say that for the most part, wiring everything up and loading the program is, is quick and easy. Now, unfortunately, I did encounter a couple of bugs that could cause some frustration to those who are not coders. And I would have really liked to have seen uh, some data sheets for some of the more sophisticated modules, but I'm sure they could be found online. That said, this is a really impressive package for a very good price from Elecro. I think it would make a great start for someone looking to get into mechatronics and programming and have the ability to be creative with their own designs. So a personal thought, uh, I've worked with Arduino microcontrollers in addition to the regular Raspberry Pi. And uh, the Pi Pico seems to be uh, kind of like a, a little bit like a super Arduino in a way. And I understand it can even run the C language programs as well. In fact, I'm hard pressed to see where the Arduino is better than the Pi Pico. <laughs> so let me know in the comments below if you think otherwise. Hi, thanks for watching. Please take a look at the video description below for special hobby view sales and discounts. Your purchases help support this channel. Happy modeling.